The exciting story begins by showing a small band where everyone is practicing their new album. Not far from there, a coffin is shown that had been buried for many years. But suddenly, there was movement inside the coffin, and the coffin opened the very next moment. A dangerous vampire emerged from it, whose name was Lestat. He had been sleeping deeply for many years, but he had finally awakened. Lestat's only goal is to inform the world about his ancient arts. So Lestat, in his human form, approached the band members. Upon reaching them, Lestat tells them that he is a vampire. However, all the people present there started making fun of Lestat, thinking he was talking nonsense. But Lestat was not joking. He showed the band members a glimpse of his powers to convince them. These were things the innocent people had never seen before. As a result, the band members started believing that Lestat was indeed a vampire. They were terrified and asked Lestat not to harm them. Lestat responded, saying, Today is your lucky day. I don't want to drink anyone's blood right now, but I want to become the new owner of your band and write many new albums. The band members had no other option but to make Lestat their leader. So, Lestat started creating new albums with the band members. Soon, the new albums created by Lestat's team became popular, and Lestat became a very famous singer. For the celebration of his numerous albums, Lestat invited many interviewers. Lestat revealed to the world that he was a vampire and had been sleeping inside a coffin for many years before waking up. The whole world learned everything about Lestat's truth. The interviewers were asking their questions in shock. Then another interviewer asked a question about the song Lestat and his team composed, which seemed very strange and suspicious. Lestat confirmed and explained that he wrote the song for his vampire companions who were still trapped inside coffins. Lestat wants to free all his vampire friends through this song and inform them that it's time to rise. Lestat's words shook everyone. Then, a lady named Jessie, who worked on paranormal activities, was introduced. Jessie conducted research on mysterious and unexplainable phenomena. When Jessie heard the album Lestat composed, she was stunned because she understood it contained a message. Jessie needed to decipher the album Lestat wrote, so she began decoding it. Within a few hours, she started getting results. Jessie then realized that Lestat was telling the truth. He was a vampire, and he wrote the song to revive his companions. Jessie called all her higher members to inform them about everything she had found. She presented the decoded lyrics to everyone and shared an important piece of information. There is a mysterious place in the heart of London where all the vampires gather at night to perform their rituals. Before Jessie could share more information, her highest ranking senior, Professor David, arrived. He immediately called Jessie to his room and told her that he knew everything about Lestat. David began showing Jessie many paintings that were thousands of years old. Each painting conveyed a different message and provided evidence of the ancient hands of vampires. David then pointed to a man in one of the pictures named Morris. He explained that Morris was a dangerous vampire who had converted Lestat into a vampire. Lestat was originally a normal human being like them, but Morris turned Lestat into a vampire and introduced him to the vampire society. Morris taught Lestat all the vampire rituals and how to survive as a vampire. Jesse was shocked to learn how David knew all this information. David then revealed that he possessed all the information about the vampire lineage. He gave Jesse a thick book related to vampires to read. Jesse was also very interested in these topics and wanted answers to her questions. So she began reading the large vampire book. Jesse learned about events from many years ago when Lestat was still a normal human. Lestat loved music and enjoyed playing the piano. He practiced with dedication all the time. One day, while Lestat was practicing the violin, his bow fell to the other side, and his violin's arrow fell far away. As Lestat reached under a cupboard to retrieve it, he noticed something strange. He found a spiral-shaped iron object on the ground. Lestat, without thinking much, twisted the spiral-shaped iron object he found, and a passage to another place within the chamber opened up. Lestat entered the room and saw a throne with statues of a male and female figure. Water surrounded the statues on all sides. Lestat spoke aloud, saying that maybe they needed some good music. The next moment, Lestat picked up his violin and began playing. Suddenly, 
The eyes of the female statue opened. The statue kept watching Lestat continuously, and then it raised its hand and pointed forward. Lestat saw the statue change its position and approached it. Lestat bit the hand of the female statue and began drinking its blood. It seemed as if something unknown was intentionally making Lestat do this. As Lestat drank the lady's blood, he immediately fainted. The truth was that the statues were the world's first vampires, and Morris had become a vampire by drinking their blood. After a while, when Lestat opened his eyes, he saw that Morris had imprisoned him. Lestat was suffering greatly, but Morris wouldn't free him. Lestat had now become a dangerous vampire. The next morning, Lestat found himself free, but Morris was nowhere to be seen. This meant that Morris had converted Lestat into a vampire and left him there. The story then transitions to Jesse, who was very confused after reading the entire book. She wanted to learn more about vampires, so she went to the large hall in London where she heard vampires gathered. Jesse entered and began looking around, but within a short time, three vampires approached her and tried to bite her. The vampires did not want anyone to find out about them. Just as the three vampires were about to attack Jesse, Lestat arrived and saved her by killing the vampires. Lestat had come to save Jesse because she had mentioned the name Morris when she entered. Lestat then asked Jesse what she knew about Morris. Jesse immediately told him that she possessed a large book about the vampire lineage. Lestat was a bit angry because he had been searching for that book for many years, as it contained all the information about the vampire lineage. For the moment, Lestat did not harm Jesse and left. Lestat was preparing for his upcoming concert in New York. As he entered his living room, he was shocked to find Morris waiting for him. Morris explained how he had turned Lestat into a vampire, making it easy to find him. Lestat was a little angry with Morris, as it had been 100 years since Morris had come to see him for the first time. However, Morris told Lestat that some groups of vampires did not like how Lestat was openly revealing their identity to the world. They wanted to keep all vampire secrets safe from humans. Morris also mentioned that because of the song Lestat composed, a dangerous vampire named Masaka had awakened from her slumber. Masaka was the same vampire statue Lestat had discovered in a hidden chamber and whose blood he drank to become a vampire. Lestat asked what danger they faced from all these things. Morris told him that he would have to cancel all his concerts, but Lestat refused. The story then transitions to the London club where all the vampires used to gather. Masaka arrived at the club, searching for Lestat because it was he who freed her with his song. Masaka started asking all the vampires in the club where Lestat was. She then found out that all the vampires in the club wanted to kill Lestat because he had been revealing the identity of vampires to the world. Masaka became very angry because she had developed a sort of affection for Lestat. Using her unlimited powers, Masaka began burning all the vampires in the club to ashes. Meanwhile, in New York, Lestat's concert was about to take place, and all the fans had gathered. Jesse also managed to sneak in and approached Lestat. Jesse pulled out the book containing the complete history of vampires and handed it to Lestat. Lestat asked Jesse what she wanted. Jessie expressed her desire to become a vampire like him, as she wanted to know all the secrets about vampires. Jessie also mentioned that she would stay with Lestat forever as a vampire. Lestat tried to explain to Jessie that the process of becoming a vampire is not as simple as she might think, and there is a heavy price to pay. To show Jessie the reality, Lestat took her to a garden where a lady was sitting. Lestat immediately went to the lady, bit her, and drank her blood. The unknown lady died instantly, and Lestat explained to Jesse that the same would happen to her. He also mentioned that vampires have no mercy for humans. After saying this, Lestat left to perform at his concert. There was a huge crowd at the concert, eager to hear Lestat and his team perform. The performance had already started on stage when suddenly some vampires appeared and attacked Lestat on stage. Lestat tried his best to fend off the vampires, but then the entire stage suddenly split in the middle. The stage suddenly split open, and out emerged Masaka, who had been searching for Lestat all along. Upon finding him, she grabbed Lestat and flew him away to a different location. Masaka declared her intentions, saying that since Lestat had freed her, 
she would always stay with him. They would rule the world together for eternity and live a happy life. Lestat was now entirely under Masaka's control. They spent time together and even drank each other's blood, which resulted in Masaka's powers transferring to Lestat. This allowed Lestat to move around during the daytime, a feat other vampires could not achieve, as they could only venture out at night. Despite this newfound freedom, Lestat remained in Masaka's grasp. Some time later, we see Jessie waking up at her aunt's house. It had been quite some time since Jessie had visited her aunt. When she reunited with her aunt, Jessie was startled to see that her aunt appeared as youthful as ever, indicating that her aunt was also a vampire. Jessie's aunt revealed that Masaka had converted her into a vampire many years ago. Before her conversion, she was pregnant and gave birth to a child. From that child's line of descent came Jessie's entirely human lineage, including Jessie herself. Jessie's aunt showed her the family tree, explaining who belonged to their family and who didn't. Soon, other vampires began gathering at her aunt's house. These were likely good vampires. Now that Jessie's aunt knew Masaka was completely free, she feared that Masaka would take over the earth and destroy humanity. Jessie's aunt did not want this because her entire family, including Jessie, was human. Therefore, she asked the gathered vampires for help, emphasizing that they needed to find a way to eliminate Masaka to protect humanity. As Masaka entered the gathering of vampires, she commanded Lestat, who was now stronger and more agile due to his new powers. However, Lestat was still completely under Masaka's control. Masaka instructed the vampires to join her team to destroy humanity, but none of them agreed. Masaka explained that humans were nothing more than animals for vampires to feed on, but the vampires present remained determined to fight against her. With no other options, Masaka ordered Lestat to kill Jesse to test if he was worthy of becoming the new king. As Lestat approached Jesse, her aunt stepped in front of her. Masaka used her dark powers to push Jesse's aunt aside, allowing Lestat to reach Jesse. Jesse, still wanting to become a vampire, asked Lestat to drink her blood. Lestat complied and began drinking Jesse's blood. Jesse quickly fell unconscious, and Lestat then approached Masaka and declared his desire to become her king and destroy all humans. Masaka was impressed by Lestat's ambition and offered her hand to empower him further. Lestat accepted Masaka's offer and began drinking her blood as well, gaining even more strength in the process. Jesse's aunt intervened just in time to stop Lestat from finishing Masaka off. As Masaka weakened, Lestat signaled the other vampires to attack her. The group of vampires launched an assault, taking advantage of Masaka's weakened state. Despite her efforts to fight back using her dark powers and taking down a few vampires, Masaka could not sustain the attack due to the loss of blood and energy. Lestat advanced towards Masaka, determined to finish her off, but Jesse's aunt stopped him and took charge. She stepped forward and drank Masaka's remaining blood, draining her completely. As a result, Masaka's powers diminished, and she turned into a fragile statue, breaking apart and ultimately dying. Jesse's aunt's actions saved Lestat from the curse that whoever kills Masaka would be turned into a statue themselves. By sacrificing herself and taking on the burden, Jesse's aunt saved Lestat from this fate. As a result, Jesse's aunt becomes a statue, meaning she sacrificed herself to save Lestat's life. One of the vampires says that she's not entirely dead. She's turned into a statue because of Masaka's curse. After everything returns to normal, Lestat goes to Jesse and feeds her his blood, fully converting her into a vampire. Lestat and Jesse decide to stay together now that they are both vampires. They go to David, who had given Jesse the vampire book. Jesse returns the book to David. David is shocked to see Jesse has been converted into a vampire. He asks Jesse how she feels about it, and she asks him if he wants to experience it too. David simply responds that he prefers to stay human. Jesse and Lestat then leave together. Since they are now vampires, they can be together indefinitely. This marks the end of our story.